Alright guys, how you doing? It's Rabir. I hope you're all good. So in this video, we're going to be talking about different tunings. Now, obviously, there are loads of different tunings, uh, and depending on the style of music you like to play, you may lean to some more than others. But for, for this video, I wanted to take a look at two tunings that I know I've not spent a lot of time with, and essentially share the process in finding new chord sounds and finding new uh, shapes and, and sort of different vibes using these tunings because it's very much a exploratory process for me at this point. I think the main uses for me with different tunings is to give me inspiration and to make me think a little bit differently from how I normally would. For the most part, I use a drop tuning for all my original material, to be honest, and I think that's because I really enjoyed the process of coming up with my own unique shapes. Of course, they're not completely unique. They're just ones that I've discovered through using a drop tuning because the reference point of what chord is what is completely removed when I drop tune the guitar. So I've always sort of lent towards, you know, drop tunings for Tosca, especially whether that be down in drop C or down in drop A, for example. Um, and I just think they're a really good way of refreshing the tonal palette and they've really, I've got a lot of mileage out of using drop tunings with the music that I like to write. But the point of this video was to see if there are new creative avenues using two different tunings that I really don't know that well. Um, so warts and all, we're going to see how far we get. So because the new standard range beers have just come out, I figured that I would uh, use them both because they're awesome and I've tuned them to do two different tunings. I've got one in well, it's, it's the same tuning as Dadgad, but it's down in B. So it's like drop B Dadgad, if that makes sense. Uh, I'll get John to put up the actual notes of the tunings on screen. And then the baritone, the Pale Blood baritone, is down in drop A, uh, no, sorry, drop G. But on top of that, I've chosen like a minor ninth tuning that I believe Mark Holcomb used quite a lot with his Haunted Shores records. And I've heard this is a really, really cool tuning to try. And not that I've spent a lot of time with it, but I figured I'd have a go. So I'll make sure that you've got the exact tunings of these guitars on screen. But on top of that, you can take this sort of tuning template and apply it to any sort of key or pitch that you want. So if you're in, say, standard tuning and you drop D, you could do dadgad, you know, or let's say you're in drop C, you could do it. You could do the dadgad tuning, but sort of starting drop C if that makes sense. But either way, let's crack on and see where we get. We'll start with the sort of dad gad tune guitar. Okay, so for this video, I'm using my stereo Kraken rig with my uh, Schmidt Array Strifector pedal board of Win. Um, I need a shorter name for it. Uh, but yeah, basically the idea is that I'm gonna take this guitar, tune it to the kind of dad gad sound, which is this, but we're in drop B, so whatever you wanna call it. My thought process at this point, and this is this is what I would do, is see which of my familiar shapes sounds good first. Now I know that uh, in Dadgad, obviously the bottom half of the string set is like the power chord thing, so you can still do. But where the other strings have changed, it's gonna throw off any shapes that I did know, and some of them are gonna work, some of them are gonna sound terrible. So let's just start with that and see what happens. Well, surprisingly enough, they sounded really cool. I wasn't really expecting that. I didn't know what to expect. And this is part of the problem with not really having a lot of theory knowledge um, that, you know, you are sort of fighting through the dark a little bit when you do stuff like this. But because I have a half decent ear on me with regards to intervallic, 
you know, recognition and all that kind of stuff. I can kind of work things out on the fly. And yeah, immediately I, I was like, this works. I've tried two different shapes, three different shapes, and they all sound really nice. The first one is that kind of minor. Now what I added on top was just the B string, a fret higher than my index finger, so like. And then the second version was, the second chord was the major version of that, so. So I have no idea what those chords are, but they're the same shapes that I use when I'm in just a drop tuning, but because of the, the other strings being different, it sounded really different to me. It was really nice, like just hoping, oh, playing that D sus 2 shape. Yeah, I'm vibing that straight away. So I'm just going to keep experimenting with this tuning and see what happens. But I guess to share a perspective, the whole time I'm going to be trying shapes, either traditional shapes like your minor sevens and major sevens and thirteen shapes to see which ones get me close. And then I'm going to start moving fingers around to adjust the intervals within that chord if, they're, if they sound wrong to me to then come up with, say, a new shape. Uh, case in point, let's do like a major 7 in 7th fret position from your A string, so that would be E major 7 if you were in standard tuning. Uh, so... So... So straight away, I went, I was messing around, moving the fingers around to try and find something that worked, and it went from sounding quite major, almost like that major sort of sixth kind of vibe. Horrible. And then I changed it to this. Randomly arpeggiating the chord like that, it sounds really unique in terms of its intervallic structure. And that's really just because I've changed the tuning. And I don't know, I'm not doing, I don't feel like I'm doing anything really different to how I would normally go about doing stuff. But I have way less reference uh, in terms of fretboard, like I know that's going to sound like that and that's going to sound like that. I have way less of that, but it's opening up more creativity to flow because. You know, I don't have that reference point. So when I find a cool chord, I'll try different ways of playing that chord and different ways of like doing that alternate picking thing. And immediately I'm like, yeah, that's a vibe. That's really cool. That's a completely different sound. So we'll carry on. We'll carry on messing around with it.
So I am getting loads of cool sounds so far. It's it's in the same ballpark as what I know in terms of sound. But uh, yeah, there's some interesting stuff coming out, like particularly when I'm playing like a power chord from your A string. So say your A and D string. So like... Now if I, ha if I add the top E string... It's just adding a fifth in the upper octave there, but it sounds really wide, which is really, really cool. Um, really, really adds to it. If you had like a high gain with a bit of delay and reverb and you were playing over the top of a lower chord progression, it'd be a really nice sounding wide chord sound. So hopefully John was able to edit that into something that showed you the process in a more concise manner, because I've been messing around here for quite a bit. But really that's what I what I do and how I come up with like song ideas and chord progressions and just generally anything to do with that side of things comes this way. It's all experimentation, trial and error, and you learn the pit you learn where the pitfalls are as you go. However, now that I've changed the tuning of the guitar, those pitfalls have moved and the reference points changed. And the longer that I spend doing this process, the more I will know where those pitfalls are and I'll be able to use this tuning to my advantage creatively and come up with some new songs, which is a really good thing to do when you get a bit stuck in a rut. And considering that this year has been pretty difficult for me creatively, and this is kind of the reason that I wanted to do this video. Um, so anyway, what I should do is just show you what it sounds like heavier so that you get an idea. So I came up with a little riff uh, that was straight off the bat. It took a little while to get it down, um, like any riff that you start writing. But uh, hopefully John edited that down and you get the idea. Really, I, I start messing around. It's got no reference point. I'm just like fighting through the dark to sound, find something that sounds cool. And that for me is the, the beauty of using an alternative tuning because it forces creativity rather than reference and, and things that you kind of know that are ingrained. And I really enjoy that process. So hopefully that came across. Uh, but right, so that's the sort of dad gad vibe guitar. We'll move over now to that kind of minor ninth kind of tuning down in drop G on the baritone. Okay, so we've got the Pale Blood baritone now, and this is down in G minor nine, whatever you want to call that. But because it's so low, I'll do 12th fret uh, harmonics so you can hear each note nice and clear. Well, this tuning is definitely more alien in the sense that we're now delving into the world of like, it's a minor chord tuning. The thing with Dadgad or whatever it is in that, um, is that it's all kind of sus and open and like roots and fifths and stuff like that. So you, you get away with uh, sort of the intervallic structure of things is a little more straightforward. But now that we've got this minor nine chord, shapes are going to probably sound very strange um, and probably won't work as well. So for sake of experimentation, let's start with my sort of minor third power chord thing. So we've got... Now what I normally do is then I'll add the minor third underneath on the G string.
That sounds beautiful. Those chords sound really lush, really full of different intervallic structures. Like, just there's a lot of information in there. Yeah. Okay. So it worked again. Like that that particular chord progression uh, shape worked again. But let's try a few different ones then. Okay, interesting discovery. I've got a shape here that I know is that I know how it sounds in my normal tuning, and this is actually the shape I use for the first part of Asylum when it comes in. However, the sound that we're getting from this tuning with this shape, I know the shape in the normal tuning on my other guitar, if that makes sense. It's really hard to explain what I mean, but this is the shape for Asylum that I would normally play, like a... And the way I'd play Asylum would be like... I mean, it sounds cool, but the chord itself sounds like this. Now, the shape that makes that sound in my normal tuning looks like this, right? Okay, so that when I play this one, so this is what I mean. That was a great example. Sorry if it was slightly pitchy, I need to tune the guitar, but it's a great example of your reference points going out the window. You have no idea what they are. Like, unless you're really theory savvy or you kind of just know, then um, you'll be like me in the fact that some chords work, some sound really unique, some sound terrible and familiar positions and now some of them have changed the chord that it sounds like. So yeah, basically I'm not relying on my fretboard knowledge in those tunings at all anymore. This is again, pure experimentation. And what's even more impressive about this tuning is that it's so far out of my comfort zone that it really is pushing me to, to explore. So let's see what happens. So I found a shape that I can use and apply to a diatonic principle, if that makes sense, to an extent, because I have limited di like theory knowledge, as I said. But what I've noticed here is that if I do root, or if I do first string and third string, that gives me like uh, root and second, and then you can use your G string to create a major or minor. So. if I take that middle finger off and bar it. So in diatonic, you could kind of go, uh, let's start from here, so major. I mean, don't, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm not theory, but the idea being that, you know, it's unlocked a major and a minor alternative here. Now they're, you know, they're not full on major or minor alternatives, but I could use those in a chord progression and kind of come up with something cool. Another chord progression, or should I say another chord shape that I found that works with the open tunings, you have to be in a certain place, but it's really nice. You can bar and then use, you can bar your string and then use the G string. So that's from 7th fret.
Well, I was trying to work out a riff for quite a long time, uh, but managed to do it. It's uh, definitely difficult because it becomes more like a piece that you're trying to learn and play after you've created it. So you like create it and you go, that's cool. But because everything's in a slightly different way, it, it throws you off. It's really strange. I think it's awesome. It's, it's definitely pushing the creative boat out. You know, it's getting the juices flowing because I have to really think about it. And although what you may have seen in this video is very much a, you know, a beginner's attempt at doing that, you know, like it was more about sharing that perspective because it's the same process that I use for when I've been working on the Tosca stuff, when I down tuned to that and I started coming up with these shapes that I'd not felt or heard before. And I was like, that's really cool. That works. It's inspiring. And I started to incorporate it into the kind of improv and chord progression ideas that I started flowing in band practice. And uh, this is the same process, you know, using different tunings to really evoke creativity rather than uh, reference points that you're familiar with because, you know, it can get a little bit boring after a while. You, get, you feel a little bit creatively dry, especially this year where, you know, in terms of creativity, it's been one of the hardest years for me to be creative in any way, shape or form. However, not when you've got different tunings and you start messing around with them. So hopefully this video has been inspiring to some of you. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video are like, yeah, nothing new here. Definitely messed around with plenty of open tunings and new tunings before. Uh, welcome to the party and all that. But honestly, it was really fun. So for those of you who haven't really ventured outside the box into alternative tunings and stuff like that, give it a go. Absolutely, get rid of your reference points and just see how far you get and see if you start creating different vibes and different sounds. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and if there are other tunings that I should have a go at. Um, but as always, thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe and share. I've been Rubir and I will see you all very soon.